as we've been watching kind of this back and forth in Washington, D.C., uh, as we've had uh, Republicans sign on to the idea that we could meet in the middle there, that $1 trillion proposal, which kind of sheds out some of the more progressive pushes there when it comes to climate change, specifically a lot which was included in President Biden's original stance. Uh, of course, the proposal would take uh, Democrats buying into the idea of compromise. And for more on that, I want to bring on a Democratic senator from New Mexico. Senator Martin Heinrich joins us right now for more on that push. And Senator, uh, you kind of put it bluntly in your tweet about uh, this compromise and meeting in the middle, saying that you shouldn't count on every Democratic vote to want to, to agree to this compromise because it doesn't go far enough on climate. We heard Senator Ed Markey, your, your uh, comrade from Massachusetts there, putting it even simpler, no climate, no deal. So what do you want to see and what's the workaround here maybe for Democrats if this proposal is where the bulk of the party wants to go? Well, I, I think the question is, is the deal um, a, uh, an infrastructure bill as outlined by this group plus additional climate measures through reconciliation or is this the only game in town? And we are at a moment where uh, we really have to be making major investments in solving the climate crisis. We are out of time. Uh, we need to show leadership on the world stage in the run up to Glasgow to be taken seriously. And we need to begin that transition now. Um, so if those investments are simply left out, I think that's a that's a hard sell. So, Senator, let's walk through some of those provisions that were in the original proposal uh, from the president. Uh, you had the half a million charging stations, an update to the country's electric grid. Uh, you had additional money for to help fossil fuel workers transition into the green economy. Exactly. I mean, there is a long list here, and I wonder which one of those you're willing to part with right now to get a little closer to a deal with Republicans. So uh, it's not my position that we need everything in the American Jobs Plan to get to yes, but if we, uh, but if the the package as a whole simply doesn't make the 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 kind of scale of change that we're going to need to be able to address this crisis, then I think it simply doesn't meet the moment. Uh, there's no clean energy standard in this package. The investments in electric vehicles, we're hearing that it may actually make owning electric vehicles even more expensive instead of moving it in the right direction. So, uh, you know, I do believe we have to look at this in its totality, but we have to meet the moment. This is our time to do something about climate. Uh, the president certainly sold that on the campaign trail and, and incorporated those priorities into the American Jobs Plan. And, and I don't think it would be acceptable to most of the people who who really embraced that agenda to simply walk away from climate. You hinted at another alternative here, Senator, which is to, to sort of meet the Republicans on the infrastructure bill, but then have a completely different bill on some of these clean climate goals uh, that could be passed through reconciliation. Has that discussion, has that ball already started? Um, have you already started the discussions on that front? And if you do move in that direction, um, do you have enough support on the Democratic side? Well, let's... Uh, I think that the likely path here is either these things will move in parallel, uh, knowing that we have the votes to pass both, or, or we may not see either of them move uh, past the Senate floor. So those are ongoing negotiations. And, and at the end of the day, my, my biggest concern is at a time when the West is on fire, when we have no water in our reservoirs, uh, when people are really suffering uh, directly from the kind of climate ch change aridification, not, not drought, but like long-term aridification, this is the time when we should be meeting that challenge, meeting that crisis, and not turning away from it. Yeah, let me flip Akiko's question uh, on the other side here, too. I mean, if you were to point to some of those things that could potentially be left out, if this, this you know, compromise is the way... Uh, that it that it goes. So what is one of those things that you say we just can't do without when it comes to the climate push here? Because there are a lot of things that would seemingly be left out if if that's what we're going to see here. Well, I I think we've learned how to do these changes and manage transitions well, and we also know how to do them poorly. And really uh, making sure that we take care of the people who have worked in our traditional energy industries is incredibly important. Uh, a clean energy standard would be incredibly important to move the dial on actual emissions. 
And if we're going to transition to an electric future, we have to have charging stations. Uh, so I think making it more expensive to own a new you know, Ford F-150 uh, Lightning is a bad idea. So um, we, we have some work to do here. Senator, we saw a lot, a lot of lawmakers responding um, to comments uh, that uh, climate advisor Gina McCarthy gave to Politico talking almost as if the, the concession had already begun, saying that we will be able to push forward in these climate goals in a different way, um, because increasingly it does feel like they won't all be included in the infrastructure bill. And I wonder um, what that conversation has been like with the White House in trying to push forward uh, these grand ambitions that they really highlighted in the first few months of this administration. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't use the word grand ambition. This is necessary. This is us meeting a, a, a crisis that is impacting our economy, that is impacting our culture and our country. Um, you know, fortunately, I think the White House walked back those statements really quickly, knowing full well how important a clean energy standard is to getting where we need to go. And uh, I simply, you know, feel that this is a moment when we, we have to meet these challenges because uh, failure is simply not an option. Yeah, and just to go back to the to the reconciliation path there, I mean, it does seem like it's one of those things where you might lose the enthusiasm that you need, mainly among uh, moderate Democrats there. And I'm thinking about Joe Manchin when we think about how he might operate in the idea of not wanting to go with the reconciliation pathway again. We've heard him kind of push back against that that strategy here. Uh, how important would it be then maybe potentially to lose support among those Democrats specifically uh, if that's the way this all shakes out? Well, you, you need everyone's vote. So just as Joe Manchin needs my vote for passing a, uh, uh, an infrastructure plan, uh, we're going to need his vote for reconciliation. And there needs to be a willingness uh, on both sides to come to a resolution here. And I think we're really going to need leadership from the White House, from the president in particular, to be able to, to hammer out what that path looks like. But once again, I'll say that, you know, ignoring climate change at this this moment in time, that's simply not an option. Uh, Senator, you just alluded earlier to this heat wave that's engulfing um, the West, uh, obviously in New Mexico, looking at uh, record temperatures. Uh, but we've also got these numbers coming out of places like Phoenix, a record 115 degrees, Palm Springs over in California at 120 degrees. And we're still in the month of June. Uh, as you look to your home state right now and, and how you cope with the record heat at a time when you're already experiencing drought, um, what are some of the solutions you're looking at? What are you hearing? We're, uh, you know, investment in infrastructure is a big part of those solutions. And in particular, managing our water resources better. And uh, that is something that I believe ought to be included in this infrastructure uh, conversation, as well as, um, you know, beginning the, the process of really ramping up uh, the, the complete decarbonization of the economy. We, we've historically tended to just think about the electric sector. And if we're going to meet these challenges in a time frame that gives our kids a chance at the kind of, of lives that we've had, then we need to address decarbonizing the transportation uh, sector of the economy, decarbonizing heavy industry, decarbonizing agriculture. And these sort of 1990s half measures just don't get us there. On the issue of electrification, you've introduced this resolution um, to try and provide incentives uh, to switch over from natural gas, especially in home appliances, machines. I mean, this is something that has, has become quite a contentious issue. Uh, and I wonder what kind of incentives you're looking at. What will it take um, for consumers and as well as builders to switch over? And how much of that is the federal government's role versus uh, local governments, especially the state? Well, I think creating those incentives that just simply remove the friction so that you can make a long-term economic decision instead of a short-term economic decision. And what I mean by that is if, if you're, um, you know, if you're going to switch out a hot water heater from a electric or from a gas fired hot water heater to an electric uh, heat pump water heater, um, there, there's an up front cost associated with that, but then there's a much lower month by month by month energy cost. 
And so if you can create the financing structures to make sure that people are acting in their long-term economic interest, then you can really uh, incentivize a much quicker adoption of many of these technologies, uh, technologies which also save lives because we're learning a lot about indoor air quality, the risks associated with, uh, with gas stoves and with combusting gas in enclosed spaces. Um, and, and so I think we do have a role in making sure that people can act in their, their own long-term economic interest instead of feeling like, well, the hot water heater went out yesterday, so I have to take whatever is available and get it in right away. Yeah, there's a lot of issues at hand here uh, and one that we've been watching as these back and forths continue. We'll see how it all shakes out. But thank you for taking the time here to chat with uh, Senator Martin Heinrich from the state of New Mexico. Thanks again.